Hey guys, this is Nathan and welcome back to Forever Stranded. Hope you guys are doing good today. I am doing great. So I have been kind of keeping a little bit of an eye on this system here that is making our empowered oil. And really there's only one problem that I can speak of and that is occasionally when a seed is dropped out of here, it will drop out after the atomic reconstructor fires. I don't know for sure why that is, but I mean, it's not all the time. Right before I started recording, it ran a couple of seeds through and there weren't any left here. So right now, I think I'm just gonna call that good. But uh, you know, the other problem obviously is that we're not getting enough canola at the moment, but we are now caught up on our oil production and our power banks are almost full. Now, the power banks is actually the next issue. So we need to get them hooked up so that, or our generators hooked up so that they're not wasting fuel. Now, currently this one is trying to burn off some oil. I had accidentally set it down somewhere and gotten some oil in it, and it had three millibuckets left. Well, the thing is, is these oil generators and the uh, coal generators by the same token hold their inventory when you break them. So it, it didn't matter what I did, uh, it would have three millibuckets left and you need 50 millibuckets to use uh, the oil. So I had to have it fill up completely, then disconnect the conduit and then let it burn through all of this oil at 100 RF a tick. Seems like kind of a waste, it's two buckets, but yeah, I mean, it could be a lot worse. Now we heard the seeds just run through here a second ago you can see there's no seeds there but yeah occasionally those seeds will end up uh just sitting there so yeah i might have to keep that in mind see about maybe setting up a ranged collector that can pick those up if these can be deactivated i don't know if they can that would be something that i would have to look at but uh, we are going to get our generators uh set up so that they are automated. Now this one here, I'm not overly concerned about. It's not gonna fill this guy up. It's these up here by the main base storage that I am more concerned about. So we can see this capacitor bank is getting fairly full. We're a little over halfway full and these generators would just keep on running if we let them. So what I'm gonna do, I am going to uh, break up this ender tank here because I don't really want it sitting out here anyway and I'm gonna let these generators burn through all of the fuel that they have here once they're done with that I'm actually gonna move the generators to the next floor up because this floor feels like a good place to have power generation you know we have this area right here that has no windows sounds like a great place for power generation so I am going to get those set up there and run a conduit back down to the capacitor bank and that's how we'll power those. So yeah, I've got a little bit of waiting to do. It's gonna take a bit for these to burn through the 2000 millibuckets. Uh, well, there's more than that because it still has to empty out the conduits, but it's gonna take a bit for it to empty out all of this stuff. And, oh no, 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 no. Well, we might end up, well, I guess we're always going to be putting empowered oil into these, so that's not as big of a deal. Once the conduits are empty, we'll just pick them up. So, yep, I will see you guys in a little bit. So, in all actuality, automating these generators is very easy. So, we are going to start out by placing our energy conduit down here on the bottom and running it into our capacitor bank in the next floor down. So we have a lot of room for a lot of generators here if we need them. Now we happen to have three generators here and uh, looks like, yeah, we have a little bit of power in a couple of these. Now, because of the fact that these things can one emit or they uh, can be compared by a redstone comparator to uh, find out if they have power inside and two, they can be shut off by a redstone signal. That's why these guys are so simple to automate. So what we're gonna do, we are going to place down some blocks here right next to our 
generators, we are going to place a comparator out of each one of these. And we can see none of them are illuminated at the moment. We'll have this go into a block. And actually we could do this even easier. Let's do this even easier. So um, we probably need a torch here somewhere. We'll put a torch right here. But what we're gonna do, we are going to go grab some redstone conduits. And that will also help because redstone conduit is less laggy than regular redstone. So let's go ahead and get back upstairs here. And what we will do is we will hook these guys up whoop, here on the front and then we will come in here. Okay, so this one is red and then this one is green and now this one is brown. So now all that we have to do is run a single, whoops, run a single redstone wire here and i forgot my item magnet is down here so i do have to pull my item magnet out of my inventory anytime i come down here or else i pick up all of the seeds but uh yeah let's go ahead and fix that and then we're going to run a single redstone conduit right here across and uh that one we can disable and then we just need to put them into the tops of these so now these, we should be able to have them output downward. So let's go ahead and see if we can turn these on. Yes, okay. So we'll go ahead and do that. And we could probably just do this on one generator, but I think it works better to have them on all of them. So this one's going to be uh, red and we're gonna put it on a strong signal. And actually, I don't think we want it on a strong signal. We'll put it on a weak signal. So uh, this one will be green and this one will be brown. So now that we have that, all that we have to do left is to take an ender tank, place that down somewhere. And I think I'll just place it right here and we'll take our fluid conduits. That is not where I wanted that. And we'll place these down here to input some fluid into our generators and set this to extract always active and there we go so now all of them should be getting fluid we might have to actually manually turn these guys on so let's drop down here and we'll set this to insert and see why we have fluid there so that's fluid insert um Power in and out, always active. I'm not sure what's going on there. We definitely have the stuff that we need here. It's set to auto extract, but I want it to insert. I want this fuel to go in. Oh, I know what's wrong. We can't put that in from the bottom. Oh, yes i remember that now i've run into this problem already once before so we'll go ahead and set that to insert even though it's not going to matter and we're going to just run a few more fluid conduits up and over the top and we can input it from the side but we have no way to put it into the side so now if we just wrench the edge of this it will connect up we'll get our fuel to go in here um, maybe it should now um, insert please why you no work why uh, this is making me a little bit unhappy well I will mess around with this a little bit I don't really want to have to uh, break those conduits with fuel inside of them I guess I could grab a tank let's try that so yeah I do have a actually with oil in it so I'll just let this drain into here and then I will set everything up now another thing you may notice I have a wireless charger here from Ender.io and this charges all of my stuff that uses power so 
my sword gets charged, my staff of traveling gets charged, my ring gets charged, everything that uses power, including my baubles, so like my uh, portable temperature regulator and my thirst quenchers, those get charged as well. Very nice. This thing has a decent range and we could probably hook some stuff up in other places to have more of them. So yeah, that is really, really handy. But it looks like I've got just a little bit of figuring here to do to figure out why on earth this is not inserting into these generators. And then I'll be back. Well, I have no idea what the issue was there, but everything seems to be working fine now. So we are inserting from the top. I'm just going to set this to in and out instead of uh, the auto mode. And yeah, it's still filling. So that's fine. But we have all three generators now running. And so now it's just a matter of waiting until they get enough power in them to trigger the comparator and make sure that everything shuts off. And that should be fairly soon because we don't have a lot yet. And you know what? We can make this go a lot faster. We'll just pick this guy up for a second. And, uh, oh, whoops. That's not going to work very well. So um, we need to put that in here or something. Yeah, that'll work out just fine. So we're getting a little over a thousand RF a tick. That's fairly good. So uh, that's still going to take a little while to get 8 million RF. So is there some way that we can use this guy to charge this other one? Perhaps? Let's go ahead and hook this in here and we'll go ahead and take this one and set it actually to extract and set this one to extract. Always active, always active. And so now we should be, yeah, we're okay. There we go. That filled it up right away. So now we're full of power in our capacitor. And this should kick these guys on now. So we look at our, all of our comparators came on and now all of our generators have shut down. Now the wonderful thing about it is, is they will burn through whatever power they, or fuel they are currently using before they shut off. So that is really nice. So now if we go back down here and reset everything, so we'll go ahead and grab this guy back out. Um, yeah what there we go whatever we'll we'll get it set up here in just a second so now these guys should turn back on right away so if we go back upstairs and take a look well we're already getting a thousand rf a tick so yeah these guys are back to burning fuel so now at this point these guys will just shut off when they are not needing to generate power and the best part about having them independent is it will shut off whichever generators don't need to run. So if we need one generator to run to keep up with our power demands, one will run. If we need all of them to run, all of them will run. So that is really, really nice. Now I need to do the same thing down in the oil production area. And there was a recommendation that I uh, set up some solar panels on the roof and uh, I'm not really feeling like setting up solar panels on the roof. I think what I'm going to do is make myself a vibrant capacitor bank and uh, charge it up and let it sit with uh, my furnace generators in a chest somewhere. And that should be fine because we've or coal generators. We've got these two coal generators. And then if we have an 18 million RF uh, capacitor bank that is fully charged, if we can't get our system back up and running with that kind of power production, then we don't deserve to be here. <laughs> so I will get the oil production section uh, automated as well so that we can ensure power down there. And I think I am going to go ahead and add the other canola farm, try to get some additional canola gro growing, and then I will be back. Well, the power system is now fully automated, and so we don't have to worry about this anymore. So I figured we would go on to doing a little bit of questing. 
So if we take a look at our quests, we are into the Tinkapow now, and we need this learning. So you may have to learn some of the multi-blocks this book will guide you. We need to make the engineer's manual. So the engineer's manual is actually really easy. So if we look up engineer uh, right here. So it's a book and a lever. Very, very simple. So let's go ahead and make that. And that'll complete that and we get some treated wood planks and a choice of clay or nether brick. Hmm. Clay is extraordinarily easy. We're definitely taking the nether brick because, yeah, I haven't completely automated the production of nether rack and redstone's kind of expensive at the moment. So, yeah, that opened up our blast coke but it also opened up the technological revolution set of quests so we can now get to that but let's go ahead and take a look at this blast coke so if you have a if you have had a look through the manual you will need a few things to start well i haven't looked through it but i'm fairly familiar with them immersive engineering so we need coke bricks and blast bricks so yeah we've got a little bit of stuff to make up so let's take a look at uh, immersive engineering and we need these guys and these guys so the coke bricks are regular bricks clay and sandstone okay so that'll make three oh, we need four that's great the blast bricks are going to be netherrack bricks and blaze powder so the blaze powder and the bricks are pretty easy. The nether bricks, not so much. We have to, uh, like I said, use lava and redstone to make that. By the way, let's go ahead and take a look here. Wow, we have almost two stacks of obsidian here. That is really nice. So I think I am going to remove the water from that for a little while and let some lava build up we do have some tanks here that we can put in there um i think these things will be okay with lava in them so let's go ahead and grab an empty bucket and we'll go ahead and hook this up that way we can get some redstone going here in or redstone netherrack going here in a little bit so we'll go ahead and pick that up and now if we remove this guy and put in a tank is this going to work so yes it will work so i'm going to place can i not oh the trim around the door okay well we'll just place these in here like this and i will configure these to be pull on this side push on that side and so now these will slowly fill up and when I'm ready I will come down here and I have 48 buckets of lava just waiting as well as everything that is in the uh, fluid ducts and stone barrel and the crucible. So by the time it's all said and done I think we'll be close to a full 64. But I think we have a little bit at the moment. So let me take a look here. We'll throw this obsidian in there and actually we got the nether bricks from a quest so we actually should be okay so we just need to cook up some bricks so let's grab some clay yeah we've got a fair amount of that so let's go ahead and grab that and you know we need to make ourselves a powered smelter I guess we do have this so let's go ahead and grab this we're set for furnace mode so this should cook three at a time and it's pretty quick so yeah that's nice all right let's go ahead and make our bricks so where did they go there they are okay so we'll start out with the coke bricks and we need two of those and now we should be able to grab the rest of these and then we need our blast bricks and we need to throw those in there and that's not what I want. All right, so. Oh, we don't have enough nether bricks. Okay, let's take a look at nether 
Oh, we have one nether rack. Ah, that's painful. Well, you know what? I think there is no time like the present to see what the nether actually holds. So let's go ahead and grab ourselves a little bit of obsidian. So we might as well, well, we'll just go with the shortened version. We need a flint and steel. I might have one of those. Um, let's go down to the shuttle and take a look. Because I have a feeling there's a flint and steel in here. There is. All right. Well, I don't want to be listening to a portal all the time. So let's go ahead and come over here into this area. And we will set up another portal and just see what we have for the nether. I have no idea if we even have anything. And... You know what, we'll cap this with glass, that way there's no spawnable space. <sighs> I don't have the ability to harvest this, do I? Nope, this pickaxe isn't good enough. Alright, well, let's head back over here. We'll need to get ourselves something a little bit better. So, I have been wanting to replace this with a powered pick from Ender IO. So if we take a look at uh, Ender IO, there is a pickaxe here made out of dark steel that we should be able to add empowered to. So let's go ahead and make that. And then to get empowered, what do we need to do? I don't know. I know there's a way to do it. So, and plus 50% efficiency breaking obsidian. 10,000 RF to do it. Um, but, okay, we need vibrant crystal plus four levels in the anvil. Okay, so uh, vibrant, let's, well, let's just see if we have one. Uh, we have a vibrant alloy. We need. We need a vibrant crystal. So let's go ahead and grab ourselves one of those. And we have empowered three on this, but let's make a few extra of these because I get the feeling we can put additional empowering on these. Now I do happen to have an anvil over here, so let's go ahead and do this. Um, no, is that not how that works? Oh, do we need, um, let me see here. Let's take a look at Ender IO again. Um, we have the Dark Steel Anvil. We might need to make that. Uh, was there not a, a, some type of a powered? I know we have the Enchanter. Let's try making a Dark Steel Anvil. That. Uh, I get a little leery of this, but we'll give it a shot. Oh, we need dark steel blocks. Oh, 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 we don't have enough. Okay, dark steel, how do we make you? How do we make you? I don't remember. Uh, iron, coal powder, and obsidian. So we actually have the obsidian now. So let's take a look at iron first. We'll grab a stack of that. Uh, coal powder, or cold dust and then obsidian all right so this should cook pretty quickly in here so let's go ahead and set this over to alloys and this should cook fairly quickly but we're going to be waiting for just a bit so let's go ahead and grab the two there we need at least one more this is cooking one at a time that's going to take a little while all right well you know what I will see you guys when this is ready to go. All right, we have it. So there is a dark steel anvil. So it just says it lasts much longer. Oh, this feels painful. Well, let's hope that that is what we needed. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, okay, yeah, that does work. 
Okay, well, now the question becomes, was it just having one? Ah, yeah, we need one at a time. So we did not need to make that anvil, but it, it doesn't really hurt anything. So can we add another level to it? No. So, okay, so to get empowered too, we need a basic capacitor and six levels. Okay, well, let's get ourselves a basic capacitor. We'll go ahead and get this as high as we can. So there's a basic capacitor. And let's go ahead and put this on there. So that's going to give us empowered too. So what do we need next? A double layered capacitor and eight levels. Okay. So I have a feeling where this is going. So we'll go ahead and grab that. And then we will go ahead and make up one of these as well. Because I have a feeling that's going to be next. So put that in there and the double layered. Oh, we don't have enough. That is actually really surprising. We don't have enough experience. So let's go ahead and grab some solidified experience and shift, shift right click these. There we go. That gave us some levels pretty quickly. All right, so double layered eight and we get empowered three. So now empowered four is octatic and 12 levels. All right, is there another one? No. So I don't know what the spoon does, but uh, that's pretty cool. So look at how fast that thing's charging. And 1 million RF, we will want to get that onto, you know what, let's get that next level onto our Oh, we're missing Vibrant Alloy. Okay, well, we'll worry about that some other time. But uh, we will be getting that onto our sword as well. And I'm kind of feeling like we might want to get some dark armor here soon as well. So let's go ahead and bounce around a little. Okay, whatever. Well, we'll go ahead and break that. Look at how fast that broke. That was nice. Okay, so glass. Um... We still have Silk Touch on our Tinker Pick, so uh, we don't have to worry about putting down glass that we don't need. All right, well, let's see what the nether holds for us. Um, I'm actually a little leery of going in with what I have. Uh, you know what? We have the Ender Pouch here. Let's go ahead and just throw all of this stuff in there. We can very easily uh, have... We can very easily open an ender chest if we need to so the only thing we have left on us is some diamond armor and some slime boots so let's see oh well we've got enderman no we've got oh we've got another fortress okay well we need some blocks so let's go ahead and Looks like we'll be fine. So let's put all of this stuff that we don't... Oh, that could be bad. The ender chest is in the ender chest. Chestception. All right, let's go ahead and put one of them down. And we'll go ahead and put these back on. Now, I don't know for sure. I would imagine the nether is probably going to chew through our power pretty fast. So, yeah, let's go ahead and... Oh! Um, yeah, our hearts are a little screwed up at the moment from going interdimensionally. Well, whatever. So, I think we should be good there. We'll go ahead and grab some glass and head through here. That way we can see what we've got going on. Because what I want to do is just stop any of these blaze from being able to shoot at us. Oh, there is glowstone down there with a chest on it. So, yeah, we may have to get ourselves something that we can... You know what? We could do that with a glider. But, you can see, we've got blaze over there. That's not good. But there are nether fortresses all over the place here. Well, that's going to be fun. 
So let's quickly get this built up so that we don't have uh, Blaze making a bad time for us. Okay, so there we go. We'll go ahead and cap this side off. And let's see what our power is doing here for our portable temperature regulator. It seems to be going down a little bit. But uh, yeah, we have an awful lot of stuff here that we can explore. But no nether rack, unfortunately. Let's go ahead and take a look at the nether bricks, though. Is there any way to take these back so we can smelt them into uh, nether blocks? What can we do with those? Not too much. So, uh, pulverizer furnace imbuing station. I, I don't really think that's going to be a thing. Furnace pulverizer. Okay, so the pulverizer. Oh, the extractor. Okay. So we actually need to get over there and grab some bricks. So I think what I'm going to do is grab my glider because uh, we can just teleport up in the air and then glide to where we need to go grab some bricks and then get back out of there. So uh, where did I put my glider? There it is. Ooh, and it's actually getting a little low on durability. But also I need to drop off a little of this stuff that we don't need. I'm just gonna drop it off in here. Uh, the ring of magnetization will be rather important. We don't need most of that stuff. And I'll keep this guy on me, even though I don't really think we're gonna need it. And yeah. I'm going to go and grab some bricks. Uh, probably not going to be anything overly extraordinary to speak of there. And I'll run those through the extractor to get some of the actual nether brick items. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. Well, I think I've got enough bricks. Now I did find out that my, my cactus pick here is actually faster than the dark pick for mining this nether brick. But that, I guess that's one of those things. But I would kind of like to go and see what is on that uh, block of glowstone that is there. So let's go ahead and let's swap these around just a bit. And we're going to teleport once, quickly switch over and get onto our glider. We're going to see if we can get onto this block of glowstone and see what Mr. G.W. Sheridan has left for us here. Because... Uh, yeah, I would kind of like to uh, know this. So this is a, a rather difficult thing to land on. Darn it. Okay. Let's go ahead and try once more. And of course, Blaze are now shooting at us. Okay. It is not a trap chest. It has ice. Really? That's what you're going to give me? Ice? Really? Ow. Alright, well. We apparently need to get out of here. But yes, we got sugar cane, ice, and a birch sapling. Okay, well, we have a birch sapling already. The ice, I don't, I don't know that there's really much of a reason for ice. I don't really know. Well, whatever. Sometime we'll have to try to get in there and get all that glowstone, but not today. All right, so let's go ahead and head back up to our main base, get everything charged back up here. And let's go ahead and head down and throw some bricks into the extractor. So this should get us some bricks fairly quickly. Hmm, excuse me. And that actually should be enough now to complete the quest. So let's go ahead and grab these guys. And... Where, where's the oh we didn't 
we didn't uh, make the other bricks yet. So let's go back to immersive engineering and we'll make our blast bricks. Make two recipes of those. There we go. So that should complete that one. All right, uh, that is not what I am looking for. Well, here, we'll do it this way. So, a little bit of clay, some blaze powder, some nether bricks. <laughs> not really all that impressive. All right, the one tool. You will need this tool for most jobs, the engineer's hammer. I have already made engineer's hammers. Really? Really? I gotta make another one of these? Okay, well, whatever. Uh, there it is. Okay, the engineer's hammer. Let's go ahead and make that up. whoop de da All right. Now, this is going to give us a reinforced storage crate, which is uh, kind of like our uh, whatever uh, strong boxes that we've been using. And then it's also going to give us a loot chest. So, that's nice. All right, let's go ahead and claim that. And we're opening up stuff all over the place. Wow. All right, so let's see what we've got out of our loot chest. Uh, yeah. That, no. Bad. Horrible. Nasty. Awful. Not good. Definitely not good. All right, well, we'll throw all of this stuff in there. You know what? Let, let's grab those uh, blast bricks. And we'll put our immersive engineering stuff in this reinforced crate for the moment. And so you can see it's a one chest worth of storage and it will hold immersive engineering stuff. Pretty, pretty simple. So we'll go ahead and drop the rest of that in there and let's see what we have next on the agenda. All right, keeping it together. Well, all these tools need a place to go, don't they? All right, so we need to make the engineer's toolbox. And this is going to give us some um, low voltage copper wire, copper coil blocks, and a quarter heart. Okay. Well, this is immersive engineering stuff. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, what do we need for this? So we need some aluminum plates, a wooden storage crate, and some rose red. This storage crate needs treated wood planks. So the treated wood planks, which they only gave us four, we need some creosote for that, I believe. So let's take a look here. Treated wood planks, yes, we need a bucket of creosote with planks. Well, in order to get the bucket of creosote, we need to run some coal through a coke oven. And the coke oven, takes a lot more bricks so we have six I believe it takes 27 so I have a little bit of stuff to make I guess I will see you guys in a little bit well I had no idea the episode was running that long so we'll have to start looking at this immersive engineering stuff in the next episode because we're definitely out of time. So I'm going to say thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, be sure to give a thumbs up. If you are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. If you have any thoughts about what I've been working on or anything that you would like to see, be sure to leave that down in the comments. And I will see you next time. Bye.